This week in Jamaica Now, public defender releases long-awaited interim Tivoli report and he has recommended a commission of inquiry in the 2010 West Kingston operation. Signed and sealed, Jamaica gets four-year IMF deal. The finance minister says the drawdown will begin in a matter of days. Prime Minister announces NHG goodies for public sector workers. $20 million worth of jet fuel stolen from Sangster Airport. And the latest in the Swiss stores robbery. The details of these and other stories coming up after the break. I'm your go-to guy for all that's popping on the lifestyle scene. Hi, I'm Garfine and this is Lifestyle Today. I'm Heather Cummings and this is Jamaica Now. The public defender Earl Witter has recommended that a thorough commission of inquiry be conducted into the May 2010 security operation in West Kingston. This is among five recommendations contained in his long-awaited interim report into the operations, which was stable in Parliament on Wednesday afternoon. More than 70 people were killed during the operation in West Kingston when the security forces went in search of then-crime lord Christopher Duduskoke. The report highlighted that a full judicial inquiry is needed to unearth the details of what transpired. It also said the Office of the Public Defender is limited by legislation and resources to undertake the kind of investigation required to get answers. That's why Mr. Witter has recommended an upgrading of the government's forensic laboratory to carry out ballistic tests, an amendment to the Public Defender Interim Act, that the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation take immediate steps to ensure sustained compliance with burial requirements at the Maypen Cemetery. The designing of an entrepreneurship model to drive economic and social development of West Kingston. The public defender highlighted that many residents continue to face hardship as a result of the social and economic displacement caused by the 2010 operation. Only this week, United States authorities released surveillance footage of West Kingston hours before the security forces entered the community. The finance minister has announced that Jamaica is set to begin tapping into money from the International Monetary Fund, IMF, in the coming days. Dr. Peter Phillips made the declaration on Wednesday as he announced that Jamaica's four-year extended loan facility in the amount of $932.3 million U.S. million has been approved by the board of the IMF. While closing the budget debate, Dr. Phillips said the first drawdown from the IMF of over 200 million U.S. dollars should be completed in the next few days. He added that 90 million of the amount will go towards direct budget support. Under normal circumstances, the fund resources are only available for balance of payment support. We are happy that the fund has agreed to break with custom, though not in an unprecedented way, and devote a portion of the resources to direct budget support, particularly because the support pledged by the other multilaterals will not begin to flow until after this first quarter of the fiscal year. But the finance minister said the signing of the IMF deal in no way represents the end of Jamaica's challenges. Public sector workers and their unions have welcomed the announcement of new special benefits to be provided by the National Housing Trust NHT. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller has announced that effective immediately, the NHT will increase the loan limits on serviced lots in NHT schemes from $1.5 to $2.5 million. Mrs. Simpson-Miller also said that the 1% interest rate reduction offered to public sector workers has been extended for another two years to March 31, 2015. In addition, she said that effective January 1, 2014, civil servants with NHT mortgages will be eligible for contribution refunds during the four-year period 2014 to 2017. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister announced that 250 acres of land at Ebony Park in St. Catherine have been identified for the construction of houses for public sector workers. The housing benefits come as public sector workers agreed to another round of wage restraint which sees civil servants going without a pay increase for a total of five years. The Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, is to review its security measures following an attack which left one of its drivers hospitalized. The police say the 46-year-old driver was transporting passengers from Spanish Town to Halfway Tree on Monday morning when he was robbed. 
They say upon reaching a section of Constant Spring Road, Lamard was attacked by a group of students from the Calabar High School. It is reported that during the incident, one of the students pulled a knife and stabbed him in the face. A total of nine students were taken into custody for questioning and four of them were later charged. The Ministry of Education and Administrators at Calabar have condemned the incident. The police in St. James are continuing investigations into Tuesday's theft of more than 200,000 litres of jet fuel at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James. The fuel was valued at $20 million. The fuel is owned by a consortium including marketing companies Esso and Toto and the Jamaica Aircraft Refueling Services, which is a partnership between Petrojam and British Petroleum. It is understood that the fuel was stored at a facility near the old domestic terminal at the western end of the airport. This is the second reported incident of jet fuel theft at the Sangster International Airport. And before we go, a story we've been tracking. Three men, including a Jamaica Labour Party JLP activist, were scheduled to appear in the gun court on Friday in relation to the multi-million dollar robbery at the Swiss stores in downtown Kingston. Charged with robbery with aggravation, illegal possession of firearm and conspiracy to commit robbery are Jamaica Labour Party activist Kayon Treasure Campbell and St. Catherine resident Norman Robertson. The other accused businessman, Donald Ho, is charged with receiving stolen goods and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Earlier this month, the Swiss stores was robbed of high-end watches and other items reportedly valued at more than $7 million. The police have since recovered 16 of the 23 stolen watches. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now. Send us your comments to online feedback at gleanerjm.com. Tune in to PAR 106 for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Heather Cummings inviting you to join us again for another edition of Jamaica Now. And as we go, we take you to footage of the West Kingston Operation Aftermath in May 2010. There is nobody down here that we are going to say that we are all innocent. But the point is, the people them what are dead in, not for them dead in front of their mothers, not for them dead in front of their girlfriend, not for them dead in front of their children, their sister, their brother. They're leading you guys around all places where, guess what? You can't see no blood in no houses where people were killed. Tell them to take you to those houses. It's wrong. People should not live like this. It's inhumane. This is not healthy for us. So much people dead, so much stress. The world's number one killer is stress. Not gunshot wound, not AIDS. Stress. That's what we're under right now. If you are dead, it's no more. But we lock up too long now. We lock up in the house like ostrich. They've said that us over as ostrich. They've killed off the world with picking them. Innocent, innocent. Not not all now go out and they've come to everything in here. Murder! Roof calling go! No voting! We're done with politicians! Marcus Glavin dead, but he burned. Live on! Black people now can know themselves. Kill them back against the wall. I will know ourselves now. Alright, now I'm going to tell you some belly back. I'm going to drop out. I will need some food. I want some food. I want some food. Yesterday they bring two bags of food. And you have any, any, any mm -hmm. um, who, who got, who got you the food? I can't talk to you.